This is a simple electron notation review. We will be going over some of the different ways that we can show where electrons are located and the formats that we need. You learned all these in the past, so this is simply meant to get you back on track and get you back caught up to speed. So let's take a look at chlorine, which is number 17. All right, there's many ways we can do this. first thing you might remember is the cheat pyramid. This is helpful, but I'm hoping that you will not need to use this. So I'm only going to use this for this first example. It is actually the order of the periodic table. So let me review what we would do with that. We make the columns of the uh, four different sublevels, the S, the P, the D, and the F. And then what it's meant to do is it shows us the order in which the electrons fill in according to Aufbau principle, which is uh, filling in the lowest energy level first, or its ground state. Ultimately, it would look like this. We follow the arrows. After 1s, it goes to 2s, the 2p, the 3s, the 3p. And then the big key to that is after 3p, it goes to 4s, not the 3d, because 4s is at a lower energy than 3d. So let's take a look at what we can do with electrons. The first thing is an orbital diagram. Orbital diagrams are very visual. It is in the name itself. It shows us where each electron is located with the energy levels, the sublevels, and each orbital. Taking chlorine, with number 17, after you go through each level, uh, this is what it will end up looking like. We would have 1s1, I'm following the cheat pyramid, then the 2s, sorry, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and then 3p5, equaling 17. Okay, but unfortunately, we don't always have that ability to have the time or the space to draw such a diagram. So we need to do other ways to show the locations of our electrons which the next one would be called an electron configuration. Now, there's two kinds of electron configurations. The first one is called condensed, which is what you are accustomed to. The second one's expanded, which you are not. The expanded actually shows up in your lesson packets that you will be working on. So let's first take a look at the condensed. We simply are taking the energy levels, the sublevel, and how many electrons are in that entire sublevel, and we're just condensing it into a simple uh, numeral and a letter format. So in this case, it should make sense that this is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. It reflects the orbital diagram. But what is the expanded? The true expanded shows every single orbital, and when I say orbital, if you see my cursor, I mean each line in a sublevel. So P's would have three separate lines, a D would have five, and an F would have seven. You are not expected to have the D's and the F's down in this fashion, but you would be expected to have the P's uh, down uh, to this level. So let me show you what I mean by that. If you break this down in the 2P6 here, it's really... Uh, you have 2p2, and then another 2p2, and then another 2p2. What is each 2p? Each one is on a different plane, a different axis. So this is the x, the y, and the z. Let me show you. I know it looks long, and it is much more complex than the condensed, hence the expanded. But it does illustrate more clearly and in much more detail where each electron is. You will not be asked to do this often, and you will only be asked to do this on the p orbitals if you would be asked at all. Just to emphasize, though, with the red underline, that corresponds to each other. So hopefully, at some level, that does make sense. Now. We also have something that we can even do further to our condensed electron configuration, and that was a noble gas configuration. 
if you recall with the noble gas configurations, the rule states, and unfortunately there's not a periodic table uh, right in front, you take the noble gas from the previous line of where your element is, pre uh, previous period or row, and then all of the uh, rest of the uh, area on that current row is having to be utilized to create your noble gas configuration. In this case, we use neon, and then the remaining row or the outermost uh, level, energy level, is 3s2,3p5. That is on the lowest period on the periodic table where the element actually lies. We can see this more clearly if I just quickly pull up a periodic table. So there is chlorine, and there is neon. So neon takes care of first 10 atoms, first 10 electrons. So what has to be included in the noble gas configuration is everything on the final uh, row where the um, atom in question or element in question is lying. So that's where you get the 3s2 and the 3p5. So that's noble gas configuration. We'll do one more uh, problem with that uh, down the road. The final type of notation is not nearly as used, but it's important to understand that sometimes you need to really condense this but still have an understanding about energy levels. And that would be the electron shell notation. And what it does is it takes the orbital diagram or, or the electron configuration and it breaks it down into energy levels. So we are condensing and bringing the sublevels of each energy level together. So for example, I have two in the first level. I have two plus another six. So that's eight and I have two plus another five, so that's seven. So how does that look? Looks something like this. So hopefully you can kind of see and mirror how the electron shell notation is compared to your orbital diagram above and see how that, that visually shows us the inner electrons, shows us the valence electrons, which are our outer electrons. So we have seven outer electrons uh, and it shows us those energy levels really clearly. All right, let's take a look at another example that's a little bigger and how we can do this much, much faster. So we're going to look at tin, and it's number 50. So we could go through a whole cheat pyramid and an orbital diagram and spend all that time. Or if you have a little understanding of the periodic table, you can fly through this much faster. So if you recall, we have different blocks. We have the S block, and we know this because it's two electrons wide, and two electrons can fit in an S orbital or sublevel. We have the P block, and that is six elements or six electrons wide because three orbitals can fit six electrons. We have the D block. And D orbitals, sublevels have five orbitals, so it can hold 10 electrons. And then finally, we have the F block. And those have seven orbitals, which can hold 14 electrons. Well, knowing that, when I look at the periodic table, it actually becomes more of this. Each row, each row is its the energy level, and each block has my sublevels in them. The big key to this is remembering that the D block is one behind the row. So if I'm on the fourth period, I'm on the third D. If I'm on the sixth period, I'm on the five D. And then with the F block, which we have a very small amount here, it's two behind. So this is actually incorrectly written, and I apologize, this should be 5Fs, this is 4F, so it's 2 behind, so it's 6S to 4F, and 7S to 5F. So let's do uh, 10 right now. So here we go, we go through, and it's 1S, 2, right? 
Then we go to 2s2. Then we go through all of this. So that's all the p's on the second level. So that's 2p6. Then we go through the 3s2. Then we jump all the way across to the 3p's. And I'm just doing the cheat pyramid, but looking at the periodic table. Then I do the four S's. And then I go into the D block. And I remember that the D's are one behind. So I do all of the D's and it's 3D10. Back to the four P's. It's four P6. Down to five S2. And in the D block, again, one row behind. 4d10 and then 5p1 5p2 and that is my electron configuration and i can do that quite quickly how do we do noble gas configuration because a noble gas configuration truly just shows us the electrons are on the outer energy levels so i will look at the final noble gas on the previous row so if we take a look at that again that should be krypton Correct. So I'm going to take Krypton. And now I'm going to go through the rest of the row, the, the period that the element is on. So if this is tin right here, I have to just go through all of these blocks or partial blocks to get to my final answer. So I have 5s2. I have 4d10. and I have 5p2. And there you have it. A little condensed version of what we need to be able to do uh, for electrons, specifically electron configurations and noble gas configurations. Please be aware, unless if you were asked to do an expanded version of the electron configuration, this one right here is more than uh, appropriate.